So there the big don't argue. Get off me, he says. Clear the tarmac. It's takeoff time. Media Vintage Sports Network presents Play by Play podcast with Jordan Hughes. Alrighty, uh, welcome back, Play by Play Rugby Edition, episode number three. Uh, Jordan Hughes with you alongside me, Tyler Campbell at Ryan Stowers. Rugby is almost up and running, boys. Uh, how we doing? How's your week been? Yeah, good. Obviously, uh, big week of training, and glad we sort of got through it all before the rains hit today. Yeah, it's been yuck. Um, how are you, mate? How's the wing? Look like you're running a bit there. Yeah, it's getting better. Um, last night was my first like full running session with the team. I think, yeah. Definitely getting better, starting to be able to pass and stuff. Good for round one. There we go. Love that. Uh, all right, plenty of footy to get stuck into. But before we get into the rugby side of things, a bit of a Super Bowl recap. As we spoke about it last week, the boys told you the Chiefs, mate. Too good. 25-22 overtime thriller. What do, what do we make of it? Well, I actually didn't even get to watch the full game because I accidentally booked my physio for 1 o'clock on Monday. <laughs> you, you missed overtime. I tried to get out of it and Connor was at the physio and told Matt that I was trying to get out of it, so then he started calling me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was a pretty good game. Like, was it most viewed Super Bowl of all time? Yeah, 123 million. Um, and then, obviously, a Super Bowl going over time, and there was plenty going on, so I just think the uh, Chiefs, well, Mahomes, too classy, and um, Andy Reid, like, some of those play calls down the stretch, like, didn't go for the QB sneak, ran the little play, sort of QB draw type play with Mahomes. Like, those things were big moments, and... You know, you've got to give Chiefs their credit. They're a championship team and they're sort of building that dynasty and see if they can go for that three-peat next year. Yeah. How's that? Um, You see Brock Purdy on those last couple of plays and who's that blocker? 68, I'm pretty sure. Just let Jones straight through both times. Got him, yeah. Taylor yeah, Swift and, was paying him. And they would get it. And the, we, um, Brandon Ayuk was so open. He'd I done know. over his man. Well, Purdy did everything he could. When he came off the field, they were leading. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, you can't do much more. How's a trick play as well in a Super Bowl? Oh, bro. It was, it was good. That was bro. unreal. How was Jennings? He Barely well. done anything all year. And then he's down, I don't know, know who he was. Throwing he touchdown up. and then gets a, scores a receiving touchdown. I think he's like second player since Nick, since, uh, Nick Foles to do that. Yeah. It was like unreal. But yeah, anyway, the Chiefs too good. Um, yeah, just Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift. It all, it's all a great story. Love the Swifties. I don't know if I like Taylor kicking out Kanye though. How good is she doing? Uh, we'll That's get to that off. later, mate. We'll get to that, that later. That is off. Uh, how's they doing the, the skull though? Yeah, yeah. That's that good, was pretty mate. cool. She's one of us. Yeah, that's good. How was Jason Kelsey? <laughs> he's the yeah. man, eh? Hey? Oh, he's actually my favourite human. Got at his the mask on in the party. And yeah, he's stuff. full Chiefs kit. He's yeah, at the after party. His yeah. brother's out there dancing at the back with his missus, and he's beside the DJ in a freaking <laughs> Ray Mysterio <laughs> mask. <and laughs> he's the man. Uh, anyway, so that's that's the us for NFL this year. We'll talk about Six Nations Week Two, an absolute. Hell of a weekend of footy. We'll start with the Scotland versus the French. The French stole it 20 points to 16. Obviously, that try at the very end. Um, ha- uh, halftime, Scotland were leading 13-10. The French found a way to, to get it done. Yeah, honestly, it was a really good game, and I think Scotland definitely came to play. I just feel uh, that's two weeks in a row now. They've kind of dropped off that last 20. And to be honest, watching the game, I kind of felt that they stopped playing. Yeah, 100%. Um, it was like they were more trying to play to... Defend keep the lead, lead yeah. yeah. Then actually play to win the game, and um, I think a big moment in that game is just before half time. <clears throat> Prop gets binned rather than take the three, they go for that scrum. And like, obviously, in hindsight, penalty goes the other way, and it doesn't look like a good call. And sometimes you've got to back your captain, but looking at that moment, that's that sort of flipped the whole game on its head because Scotland there they just weren't coming away with points in that sort of A zone and attacking into the goal. and I just feel like they needed points there, reset, then they play the whole first 10 minutes of the second half with 14 on 15 and could come out with a bit more enthusiasm and a sort of a strategy to how to attack that as they're chatting around at half time. Yeah, like touching on what Tyler said, I think Scotland just were happy with the lead that they got and started trying to defend it and all it takes is just a special play. They score a try, they're already up and that's exactly what happened, that French winger. Just puts a little kick through. Don't know what's going on with the back three. The fullback was in no man's land. There was no covering winger. That was freakish, though. Yeah. That was so good. But, like, that's all it takes if you're trying to defend a lead. And then that happens. And then, you know, they get another opportunity, make that line break down the end, and then he drops the ball. Luckily, Finn Russell turns it over. Like, that was unreal by him. And then I think that's a try, eh? 
That that is a tr- it's on the boot. The boot comes out and the, the thing ball is though, goes down. You can't down. see it. Online. You can see it though. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it. You see it on the ground, but you don't know where it is, bro. Oh. I'm, Three o'clock in the morning, I'm watching that, and I'm just like, what the, that is definitely a try, like the biggest, I don't know, what's it called, and it's like, anticlimactic finish. Yeah. Which morning were you watching, this is the... Yeah, so tell us about this one, what happened here on, Re on Friday night? Was it, yeah, uh, was it Friday night? Yeah. 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 So, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I stayed up late as Friday night to watch the game at one o'clock, playing COD, Switch it over to Stan, and I'm clicking on it. I'm like, "What the hell? Like the the stream must be broken." Anyway, it turns out the game's on the next morning. Oh, uh, true. Stay up late, sleep, sleeping for training. Get to training at ten o'clock. Oh, okay, no. <laughs> Only a couple hours late. <laughs> yeah, you're keen though. You're keen. Oh, so keen. And I ended up doing it the next night. Stayed up, watched the Scotland France, and then the Wales England, which was actually a surprisingly what? you know interesting game. Was the Scotland France game where they had the big game of kick tennis? Yes. Yeah. 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 And that just, was ridiculous, yeah, man. And yeah. The commentators said as well, like they've got to change the rules. Yeah. But like you don't see that happening, and you don't see this this hemisphere over here. Nah, nah. Because well, they must know the rules better. I, I think we've got uh, shorter attention spans that we get bored of doing those things. And yeah. Just literally, run that like mm. the whole everyone else other than Has the two players kicking. Like, yeah. Oh, yep, just sweet. standing in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was shit. Um, before we move on, but the French, they're going to be out of touch at the moment since the World Cup, bit of a hangover. They, Definitely. they don't look the same. They, do, they do not look like, you know, in that World Cup, the, the balls were offloads everywhere, running rugby. At the moment, they just, like yeah. I said, like without that try, that individual brilliance by the winger, they, they really weren't offering much. I think it's a bit of um, you were seeing how good of a player DuPont is. Yeah, 100%. Like, and as a leader because... They just look a bit messy around that ruck area. They're not getting their sort of speed. And his ability to sort of pick the ball up from the base of that ruck at times and engage three or four defenders to create space is world class. Like he's, I don't even think it's arguable anymore, but he's the best nine in the world, possibly the best player in the world. And you're seeing what he's doing at the moment for Toulon. Was it Toulouse? Toulouse. Toulouse. Like some of the things he's doing in that comp. Playing 10. Playing 10, playing nine. He's just carving up and... I think he's just a big, such a big loss, and you can sort of see the effects of that on the French team at the moment. So I think they're a different team if he's in there. But yeah, they do look like they're a little bit hungover from the World Cup and not not in rhythm. Yeah, I don't think that there's another nine in world rugby that is the lead playmaker. Like most as nines, as him, yeah. yeah, most nines are just role players, mm. get the ball out early. Another you know, ten with the yeah, star. Yeah. yeah, but he just darts out of the ruck and, like you said, draws in three or four players and then there's so much space out wide. Like little kicks in behind. Yeah, He's yeah, like so good. Crossfield kicks from the base of the ruck. Like. Oh, I'm, I'm intrigued to see him in sevens, the Olympics, in a few months' time. He'll be good. He'll be under to watch. Yeah. Him. Yeah, I can't see him not being good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, next game was England versus Wales. 16-14. England just find a way to win. Uh, the Welsh probably let this one slip. Yeah, definitely. I think... Um, once England got that lead, though, their defence turned unreal. Yeah. I reckon they've got the best back row in all of rugby. Yeah, they can grind out a game so well when they yeah. have to. They it's had, um, what's his name? Uh, is it Underhill, the yeah. seven? Yeah. Underhill, the seven, and then he goes off in that, is it Cunningham South? Comes on and just as much punch. Like They're yeah. so physical, and the number eight had a... Absolute blinder. That try he scores. Yeah. When you're down to 13 men and you pick yes. off the back of a scrum and run through four people. Like, that's another sort of game changing moment because Wales were all over them in that first half. Yeah. And you know, if they get their second yellow, uh, don't get their exit sort of right, England get a chance with a scrum. And you're probably thinking England here is looking for a penalty. They're looking for three points to sort of keep that score margin low. And he just picks it up and goes, oh, I'm finishing this. Yeah. And there's just such an aggressive run. And as much as I hate it, like, England are so good at what they do. Um, they just grind out games, win when they need to win, and that's pretty much a performance you sort of see out there. And Wales obviously quite young and inexperienced, but that's two weeks in a row they've been close, and I think they can take a lot away from that and sort of keep building. So they're, they're actually looking pretty good moving forward and sort of developing these younger guys that are getting a go. Yeah, England were playing pretty aggressive as well. Like, they got a penalty in the 22, and they went for touch, and you could hear the crowd, eh, like... Even I was watching it with Jules, and I was like, they never, ever do this. They will always take the points no. in their half. Yep. Uh, yeah, so there's find a way to win. And finally, Ireland versus Italy. Haven't got much for you here. 36 points in the one-way traffic. 
Um, there's no real issues about Sexton. Mm. That, that 10 is, like, he's, he's good. stepped in and he yeah. is really good. He was probably man of the match for me watching that game. Like, his ability to sort of hold the ball up and delay his passes, like, it's kind of a lost art form for a lot of sort of players and 10s in rugby at the moment. But he'll p double pump, he'll hold the ball up, and he sort of creates those little gaps for his midfielders and his forwards sort of coming off his shoulder. And you saw the effects of that, like, the way they get quick ball after that half breach and just play and then the skills of their forwards to throw those little short passes. And he just yeah. creates time for himself. And I just think, you know, him a couple more years in the jersey come the next World Cup, like Ireland's still looking strong and looking yeah, imagine good. Imagine him in four years' time. Yeah, like, yeah, unreal. And, I mean, if you got someone like Bundy Aki outside you and you're playing 10, he's getting you game line almost every time he gets the ball and makes your job so much easier. The defence doesn't want to rush up or they just let through a line break. Uh, yeah, so Ireland keep it moving. Um, so that's Six Nations week two. We'll get to our week three picks later in the show. But uh, a bit of rugby news. And the main news this week, unfortunately, it's pretty upsetting. The Melbourne Rebels in absolute turmoil. Uh, the CEO sacked. They have $17,000 in their account. That's all they have. And then they owe, I saw the numbers here, $11.6 million tax office payments. Payments to the board, $5.7 million. Suppliers, two point eight. Unpaid stadium fees, one point one. Seven twenty for revenue. Uh, to the state revenue office and then super 250 so total owing is 22 million dollars and they have seventeen thousand three hundred dollars in the bank they're done you have to blame rugby australia though for let, for allowing it to get that bad well do you reckon they see their books well they like have how, to surely well what, did they know. all fall under the same yeah but well maybe, maybe they can they're different entities i'm not sure how much like i know in nz like New Zealand rugby oversees the five Super Rugby franchises. Yeah, they should be, I'm sure. Like, and New Zealand rugby actually pays for like injury replacement players. Like, it comes out of their budget, not the actual club's budget. Mm. Obviously, different apples and oranges because there's a lot more money in NZ rugby at the moment. Yeah, but it's sort of like, yeah, how do you get that much in debt? How do you let it get to this? And obviously, yeah. CEOs being sacked, and they've made a whole heap of uh, staff redundant. But it's sort of you look at them like they've been to Japan. They've been doing tours and stuff like that. And, like, that's 300K, maybe more to take a team, take a squad to Japan. Yeah. And you're going, well, how how you guys weren't doing these tours when you're in so much debt to the point you've now run your club into the ground? Or well, even ahead of that, like, this time last year, they you could see, obviously, things aren't going great. And they go sign Tupo. They go sign Luca. I'm yeah. sure you go, Matt Proctor. We, we can't afford doing yeah. it. Yeah, like, but, that shit. And know. then, like, you got to feel for the players as well. Like, the young players who are coming up, their dream is to play in Super Rugby. They finally get a chance to, you know, start in the Super Rugby franchise and then they've only got one year in it. If that, if they even survive this year. Yeah. Like. It's going to be interesting to see how many of these players Oz Rugby lose. Heaps. Heaps. Well, like, cause I, I think so many will go to Japan. Josh, yeah. um... Can Kemeny, he's already Kenny? gone. Yeah. Oh, Kemeny? No, yep. Kemeny, the Wallaby uh, back row. Oh, he's left. He's left already. He's gone to Northampton this week. Yeah, I think I think that they've made a policy in their contracts where that they are allowed to... Fair. Yeah, well, and I think Rugby Australia is obviously going to try to hold on to the big names that they've got there and sign them to other franchises. Mm -hmm. But I think, bro, if you're like, if you've been at the Rebels and you've done all your time at the Rebels, you, you kind of feel heart done by, by Rugby Australia, like... Or what's happening, and that you would you'd want to go over there and get your money. Yeah. And now it gets interesting. Like if I look at the sort of ten position, you've got Carter Gordon there, who's going to be looking for a club. Yeah, yeah. You go up to the red, you've got uh, Harry McLaughlin, a young kid coming through. Lawson, who's still developing. O'Connor. O'Connor's obviously still there. Tommy Liner, another young kid. And then yeah. you go down to the Tars. Tane Edmonds there, who's developing. Down to the Brumbies, you've got Noah. Alicia, and then you go Ben Donaldson, and like he comes yeah, in. It's hard. Someone's now not, someone's missing out and coming off the bench in that sort of group of players. Yep. And it's going to be like that in a few positions. Like obviously, uh, Taniella is going to be looking for a club. It'll make the Australian team stronger, you'd think. Yeah, it, it would. Yeah. It's going to make them stronger and a bit more depth. But now you're also missing the exposure of pl players playing at that level. Mm. Um, obviously, some positions it probably works out. Like it's probably a shortage of second rowers in Aussie rugby. So that's going to bolster the sort of the packs around the different clubs, but then you're going to have young guys like the Bayou boys, yeah, um, stuff like that, that now they're going to be struggling to get a sort of a contract in, in Oz because well, where, do you, where do you put them? And yeah. if players are already contracted for the next three years, like young wingers, you can't really warrant bringing someone in that's come off contract. Yeah, like you said, eh, Australia is going to lose so much talent just from this. Yeah, it's tough. And the, and the best team for Kit.
as well. <laughs> Loves the kit. Truly sad. Um, so we'll do our Super Rugby preview now of each of the Australian franchise, and we'll start with the Rebels. Um, you know, assuming they get through this year on paper, fuck, they're a good side. Yeah, I think them or the Reds are the two strongest sides in um, Australian Super Rugby at the moment. What's it called? You got Callaway at fullback. You got Carter Gordon at ten. Like already, that's just so good. And then, like you said, you got Matt Proctor from the Canes. Yeah, so their team are now in this now this week. They've got Dalgunu on the wing as well. Uh, Murphy, Gibbon, Tupu, obviously Canem, you, you boys know well. Salakai Loto, Wil- Wilkin, uh, Leota. Like, it's... Yeah, like, fucking, these should, are, these are all team, players yeah. that are potential Wallabies or have been Wallabies. Like, this team's stacked. And it's not like it's just young Wallabies either. Like, no. you've got a lot of experience among those players. Like, obviously, Rob Leota's got a few caps now, Taniella. You had someone in, like, Matt Proctor, who I... Was with the Canes in 2016 when they won? Yeah, he was with them when they like, won. That's more experience there. Like, There's a whole team of experienced footballers that have played at a high level, that have played at international um, level. He played and for the All Blacks as well. Yeah, I'm pretty he, sure. got, he got that cap when yeah. they went to Japan. Yeah. Um, so you look at it and you're going, like this team on paper is looking good, but then at the same time they can go one of two ways where they put the distractions aside and go, hey, this could be our last year as a squad. And they go out and kill it, or they let the distractions get to them. And obviously, there's going to be a lot of media pressure on them, whether they're doing well or doing bad. And it, that can sort of hinder a team. And it's pretty hard to sort of get motivation if you don't know what you're doing in the next 12 months. Especially losing all those people as well that have been in that core group, like the staff. Yeah. yeah. They've yeah. laid off like six people or something like that. Yeah. And it's not like they're playing for contracts. No. Like for next year, because a lot of them will get picked up. Well, they're trying to play for a future club. So they're trying to just play to hopefully keep their team in yeah. the comp. Like it's because it'd be real interesting. Say, you know, ideal world, they win the comp and then they're gone. It kind of looks so it's, it's a bad look. So, so how, where does it end up? How do they go? Do you think what happens? I think they're a top eight side. Yeah. Um, but as you said, it's it, it's hard to say that they'll push into that top four. Yeah. Just because there's so much going on and. You just said it, players are already leaving. Who knows what happens in the next sort of six months if it keeps going downhill. Maybe more players are going to start shooting overseas to get that sort of guaranteed money because at the end of the day, you only got a short rugby career and you've got to look at your future and look at what's going to set you and your family up. Yeah, look after yourself. Exactly right. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, we'll talk about our team, this side of the board, the Queensland Reds, new coach Les Kiss at the helm. Um, we saw them last week against the Tars. They were electric to watch. Paisami dominant. Oh. Uh, yeah, what would you make of that, firstly? I do not know what they're going to do at the fullback position because Jock Campbell... And the 13 an position as well. Like yeah. Fluke, Campbell, Pattaya. Like yeah. That's you. Yeah, well, Jock had an unreal game. His yeah. vision, his kicking, his running. Like, honestly, like, almost a perfect performance from him. And then you got Jordan Pattaya who can just, you know, break games open. And then Fluky is probably the most consistent outside centre in Super Rugby. I think it, all three of them start. Yeah. I think it, it's just go, where. Yeah, you just find a place. You've got to go Campbell 15, don't you? I, I think so too. Like, for me, Geordie was, you know, a shining light in that Wallabies team at the World Cup at 13. Yeah. Um, sucks for Fluky because that's sort of his primary position. Um, but, you know, he's also quite solid on the wing. So, because you've got obviously Vonavalu on the other wing. And that sort of other winger spot, sort of, sort of open. with Donguna gone, like who, who sort of gets that? Well, there's Matt Greeley, there's Floyd, there's Fluky, and a lot of young guys. I think you got to sort of have Fluky out there because he's been good for the Reds. He was in that wider Wallaby squad last yeah, year. Aussie A, heaps of experience. Yeah. At the end of the day, you want your best seven out there, and yeah. your best seven that's going to put you in the best foot forward to sort of win a game. So I think they're all sort of in that mix. It's just where do you put them? And that's going to be a sort of conundrum that they're going to have to work out over the next sort of two weeks before round one. And then even into the season, there could be a switch up. Just make sure they get that mix right. And the next question is, who starts at 10 in round one? If O'Connor's not fit, I reckon Harry McLaughlin. Yeah. Yeah. Like he was good on the weekend. He keeps growing. Um, Tommy Lyon has just come off injury. And poor kid probably hasn't played many games. Mm. But it'll be interesting to see what they do. And that's a good problem to have. Yeah, yeah 100%. Like, depth at... Wow. They've got depth in their front row, like who starts in the front row is another question. Yep. Uh, they've got depth across their back even line, the back row as well, even their cool. back row. Um, their second row, uh, there's a bit of depth there. Who, like was, a, who was that new fellow that was playing for them? Is that, that Cormac? 
Yeah, the Irish, the Irish fella. He was a shoot shield player of the year last year. Yeah. He is massive. He's, He's he runs Work hard as well. Yeah, he played the full that full game yeah. that first trial. Yeah. Like, so yeah, they got good depth and they've got a a lot of talent. It's just you know, Liz Kiss seems like he's a pretty smart coach. Mm. So I think if they get that mix right, they're going to be one of the strongest, if not the strongest Aussie side. Yeah, definitely I, should I be. like the way they're playing, eh? like finally playing to the strengths that the Reds have always had, yep. you know, like those explosive outside backs and then punching Hunter through, like mm. he makes a huge so difference, good. eh? Uh, so prediction, where do they end up in 24? By the end of the season, I expect them to be in that sort of between fourth and sixth. Yeah. That should sort be of done. range. Yeah. Um, it's hard to tell at the moment because we haven't seen them go up against NZ teams, and yeah. that's sort of where that's you, always the issue. It's sort of <laughs> where you gauge yourself. Yeah. Um, that's sort of where I guess if you're playing Super Rugby, you want to go against the Blues, the Chiefs, the Satyrs, and that's where you sort of learn. All right, this is how good our team is. But I, I don't think it's good. It looks like they're growing and they're in the right foot. So I see them in the middle of the pack. I don't think they're fighting for the eighth spot or seventh no. spot like mm -hmm. they were last year. There's big improvements there. Thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I agree. agree. Yeah, I, I think that they'll be real strong. I think it, it'll it be dependent on how the Rebels go as well because I think the New Zealand Super Rugby sides are looking pretty handy. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move to the Waratahs now. Uh, Darren Coleman, the head coach, he's already in the hot seat, they're saying. Uh, they, they said the other day he's got to around four to prove where he's at or he's gone, which is I think it's ridiculous personally. But uh, they've still got Angus Bell there, Big Gleason number eight, Jay Gordon, Parisi. They have star power. Um, but just haven't been able to deliver the last mm -hmm. few years. Yeah, well, watching that trial, they just looked in shambles. Like, yeah. Um, I think their only strong point was their scrum through that whole mm. trial match. Everything yeah. else they were just getting you know, smoked in. It's it's a bit weird because obviously this is his second year mm. um, sort of under the under control of that team. And they looked really good last year. Like they made big improvements and... Like I've said it before, you can't judge too much off trial games. No. And I think they'll I think they'll be all right. But I don't think they have the talent that they've had in other years. No. Like they've normally they're quite stacked and they've got, you know, thirteen, fourteen wallabies yeah. but don't um don't perform. Yeah. So whereas this year they're probably a bit a uh, bit less on the sort of star talent, but I think they'll come right and sometimes for a coach it's hard to sort of build those standards and build those uh, policies that you want within your team straight away. And, you know, we, we can use us as Bond last year's example. We didn't win a preseason game. We won the one against the Canberra team. Yeah. And then we come out and win seven of our first eight games. Yeah. Like, so it's hard to judge off preseason. I think they'll still be all right. And it's good to see that the Aussie teams are looking like they're getting stronger. Definitely. Uh, do they make the eight? I don't think so. I, I don't think they make the eight. Yeah. But I, I think that a lot of the... Like, how well they will go will be determined on how good Parisi's playing. Yeah, he Because is. when he was playing Unreal, they were going so well. I think it's like you could almost pinpoint it down to just that one player. If he goes well, they can, you know. He's the man. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go out west now. The Western Force. Uh, it's a big recruits, obviously. Nick White, Ben Donaldson coming in. Simon Cron, the head coach, just been re-signed to 2026. Uh, I reckon they'll push for the eight, personally. I reckon they'll be much improved this year. Uh, how do we see it playing out? thing with the force is they're probably the hardest place to travel Yeah. because it is the longest travel for pretty much every team. Mm -hmm. um, but on the flip side of that, they obviously got to do the longest travel yeah, when they're going every, to other yeah, teams. Yeah. Um, but they've got, like, obviously Ben Donaldson's come up. They look really good against the Reds last week. Uh, Nick White's in there, which... I'm hit and miss with because I think someone like a finds you yeah, now. Yeah, it's tough for him again. He's on yeah, the bench. yeah, but like he's he does suit the sort of thirty minutes, impact, bring that explosiveness, uh, yeah. bring that sort of impact that can help them sort of grind out and win those back end of games. Um, I don't know if their forwards are strong enough. That's my biggest concern. Yeah, top five. I think their backs are pretty good, but you saw them get eaten in the scrum by the Reds last week, and then the Reds, go, got, Reds got eaten, eaten the by the Tars. Yeah. And they're, they're, you know, the other, like, Fiji scrum's really strong. Most of those NZ teams have really good scr uh, scrums as well. So I think that's where they're going to struggle is in their pack. And I think they push for an eight spot, but I do think they finish around that nine, nine tenth on mark. The cusp. You're yeah. on the cusp. They have signed a few of those All Blacks. Uh, at Tomoli, obviously Harry Hooper from the Reds comes over. Uh, ben Fennell, the former Crusaders hooker, he's there as well trying to help out their tight five. So 
Yeah, we'll I, see. I, I too, like obviously a really good footballer, but he's still sort of coming back. Like he had a bad run of injuries. Yeah, okay. Like he had the hematoma where he had to get sort of cut out. Oh shit! So I don't know if you've ever seen one of those. Mm. It's the equivalent of like a motorbike one. Mm. And then he had a hip surgery, so he's still I reckon trying to find his legs. And yeah, okay. I think he'll be stronger back into the year. Um, but yeah, it's gonna I reckon it's gonna be a uphill battle for them. So they're sort of working those combinations and trying to get that forward pack going. Any final thoughts on the force, Reed? Uh, Amy Stewart, 12, handy. Yeah, I, was, I can't really see them making the top eight. Like, if we're putting the Reds and the Rebels yeah. in there, and I, I'm going to say that we're probably putting the Brumbies in. 100. Yeah, so I, I don't think I see Force making the top eight. All right, you mentioned it. The Brumbies are generally our strongest team in Australia. Uh, they made the semis last year, or quarters. They lost semis. to the Chiefs in that semi. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, they'll be keen to go a few better this year. Most returning stars at the helm, once again. Uh, Noah leading the charge. Should be competitive once again. Yeah, definitely. I think you got my favourite pre-season player in there, oh, yeah. Charlie Cale. He has been killing it. And um, I played with him down at Eastwood when yeah. I was down there. And his skills, you know, for like a big guy and eight, his yeah. speed. Number yeah, number yeah. eight. His speed and skills for such a big guy will be so good. I think if they can fit... Valentini and him in the same starting pack. Look out. Yeah. Is Pete Samu still there? Uh, question. He's not named this week. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I haven't have seen him. I thought, you, I thought you left. Didn't you go overseas? France? He might have. I, oh, he's, no, he's going to France. He's in yeah. France. Yeah, so they'll have Rhymer, Charlie Cale, and Valentini. That's an unreal yeah. back row. You've got Val- Tom Hooper, remember, as well? Tom Hooper oh, as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, ben. I still think they'll be the strongest Aussie team. Yeah. Uh, the thing the Brumbies have done well over the past few years is they compete against NZ teams mm. and they've been strong at home. Like they beat the Hurricanes at home last year. They beat someone else at home. I can't think off the top of my head. But like they, they just do well against the NZ teams and while they've lost a few players, they've still got their good core group and they sort of have their style that sort of worked for them. Yeah. Um, they play out the back. They hit their forward runners. They get over the game line really well. Um, obviously led up front by Valentini and... Um, we've got another big, as he said, another big player coming and helping with those carries with the loss of sort of Pete Samuel if he is gone. It's sort of hard to look past them as the best Aussie team because their backs are still dangerous. Um, they're really good at the set piece. Obviously, their mall has sort of been the pinnacle of what their team's about the last few years. And I just think they're too well drilled and they're definitely a sort of top top eight side. Yeah. But I potentially think they're that top four side because I think one Aussie team, sort of, I think they were second or third last year. Yeah, and I I still think they're going to be the best Aussie team. That's sort of what I'm sort of getting at. I just think they're too well drilled and heading in the right direction. And I think Noah's going to take another step. I think his time in France helped him, um, yeah. really helped him in seeing a different perspective of rugby, and he actually played really well over there. Mm. So I think he's going to lead them around, and he'll be fighting for that Wallaby jersey again. And they've got Jack Debrasini there as well. I think mm. he's handy as well. Big yeah. boot. He's always been good. So he'll be pushing, you know, 10, 12 channels and whatnot. And then um, Corey Tool. I love that guy. He's yeah, a he's a freak. Favorite. I think what the Brumbies have always done better than every other Australian <laughs> team is grow talent from mm. Canberra and yeah. retain them. And then you've got players that are in that system that have been in that system for like you know, like eight plus years and then they're coming into Super Rugby and like they just fit in so well because they know their roles are all growing up. They're built into that system. And they're pretty big on building their club comp too. Like yeah. you look at it, like Rebels players will come up and play in our comp and play in the Shoot Shield. Mm-hmm. Everyone sort of bounces around. I know in Canberra, uh, we try to get Noah to play for us one year. Yeah. But they're like, nope, you got it. Like the Brumbies are big on their players dropping into that Canberra that comp and strengthening it up. Cup, yeah. yeah, so... I just think that's how they sort of do it and they build it and they try to lift the standard of their club rugby to help build up their team. Yeah, that's the way to do it. And then finally, uh, we'll touch on the Fiji and Drua. Of course, you know, we're not the Fijians, like just talent across the board. They made their first finals appearance last year. Uh, Daryl Lange is be the captain at number eight. Frank Lamani, he's their most experienced guy, the number nine. Uh, they've lost a couple of experienced guys. Teddy Teller, as you guys know, he's yeah. retired, I think. Um, hopefully they make the finals again. What, what do you reckon? I think um, there's no question that they have the star power to you know, cause upsets, beat any team in the comp. Like, um, did they beat the Crusaders last year in, yeah, in, in Fiji? Fiji yeah. Like, they when they go to Fiji, it's like they do not lose. Yeah, so hard to play there. Yeah, I think the main thing will just be their game drivers. If they, if they can get good game drivers and they 
you know, keep composure for the full 80 minutes. You could see them coming in in that top four. They they can be that good. Yeah. Yeah, I think Rian touched on it. Obviously, at home last year, they were unbelievable and almost impossible to beat. I think they lost one game at home last year. Yeah, that sounds right. Like, they were ridiculous. And then in terms of game drivers like Caleb Muntz, I'm not sure how... He's still injured. Still in, I'm not sure yeah. how he's tracking Yeah. Um, if it sinks. He did his ACL, but... The way he controlled that game for when he was playing for Fiji against England and that win just before the World Cup, like he's sort of the key man. I'm not sure who their next in line ten is. It's that Camu Valentini. He'll be the starter. He's yeah. played a few games last year. Handy. So. Like they got handy footballers. They got talent, and obviously got a few of the boys that have run around for us. Um, big turnover of players, but I don't know how they do it. And I think you touched on it last week. They just produce talent. Yeah. Like you'll get a winger that you've never heard of before, and he'll go out and just score three tries and pull off something ridiculous. Yeah. So four weeks into the comp, best winger in the comp. Yeah. So they'll no be strong. No one ever heard of him before that. <laughs> exactly right. From some local village yeah, popped up, yeah. ready to go. Uh, yeah, right. So that's the Fijian Drua. So next we'll talk about the New Zealand teams a little bit. Uh, let's crack into week three preview of the Six Nations. Um, let's get down to crunch time now, boys. Ireland versus Wales to get things started. Um, the line's 22 and a half So the bookies think Ireland by a long way uh, I think Wales will be competitive Yeah definitely After watching that game Against England I think George North Made a massive difference Yeah Like he, like it was unreal The difference that one player Can make to a team Because eh? he was getting those balls Making game line They were playing off the back of that um, I think That fullback that played for them Apparently he only found out He was going to play for them At 10am that morning for Wales, yeah, true, it's young right. fella, yeah, right, yeah. What exactly. happened to some pull out? Oh, yeah, I'm not too sure. I just remember hearing it on the broadcast that mm. they were saying he's found out that he's coming in. Fuck, yeah, yeah. Right. and um, I think once he builds confidence, he looks like a he he'll be unreal be as well. Yeah, but yeah, I think it'll definitely be a close game. Wales look strong, and they look strong against England. Ireland still win, you reckon, in a close one? Yeah, Ireland will still win. Yeah, yeah, I think Ireland's too classy at the moment. Um, where's the game being played? It's in Ireland. In Ireland, yeah. Yeah. Tough. Like, and I, I don't know if we, anyone really watched the Irish game, but the fan base they have behind them at the moment too. Yeah. Like the crowd singing zombie every two seconds. So like, good. It's become quite a cool little tradition yeah. in Irish rugby. And yeah, I just think the way they're playing and the expansive style of footy they're sort of playing while still being physical up front is just sort of too good. And you know, I'm a big fan of the six that's just come in for Wales. I think it's number six. Scored two tries and two tests now. Yep. He's a big boy and he's been solid. But I just think the experience in that Island Ford pack, um, their 10 playing really, really well. I just, I just think they sort of – I don't think they pull away by too much because I don't know what the bookies are saying. But I, I will say it's probably going to be about 12 plus. Yeah, I can see that as well. Yeah, for me, Ireland too good. But, yeah, Wales will push them. Mm. Uh, and then Scotland versus England. Scotland is the slight favourites in this one. Uh, I personally hope the Scots bounce back here and do a job. But it will be a hell of a game. Yeah, I think um, after watching a full game of England, you really appreciate how strong their defence is. Mm. Even when you see them sitting in their defensive line, their spacing is perfect. When they're coming up in umbrella defence, with their umbrella defence, normally you end up like two men overlap on the outside, but they come up so square and they shut down so much attack. So it'll just be whether Finn Russell can... You know, find ways through that, and we all know that he can. He's the man. Yep. Yeah, you touched on it. That was my thought. It's obviously keys, Finn Russell, and on the other side, obviously England taking away his, his time, not letting him play. Yeah. And then, um, obviously, Scotland, like, they're going to need a big game from their midfielders, both of them, because if they don't get that first phase sort of gain line, then that line speed comes in and yeah. kicks into place. But if you're going backwards, defensively, it is hard to sort of reload and come forward. Mm. So I think that that's key there. And, also for Scotland, they've got to put in an 80-minute performance. Yeah. Um, that's two weeks in a row they haven't played for that full 80. And, and when you play a team like England, yeah, you might think you're ahead and you're all over a team, but they'll just claw their way into the game, as we've seen, and yeah. kick their penalties. And then with five to go, they score a winning try. Like, they're good at it. Everyone hates them for it, but that's their sort of DNA and that's their point of difference. So I just think Scotland plays a full 80. They get, a, they get away with a win here. Um, obviously, England, I think, were looking to bounce back after losing to them last year in the Six Nations. Yeah. So, but I think I'm going to go with Scotland. Mm. Um, that's sort of where my heart is more than my head. Yeah. And I think yeah. I'm hoping for a Finn Russell masterclass. 
he will need it against the English. And then do we know if Marcus Smith's back or I, I know Manu? I haven't seen a team yet. Yeah, Manu Tuolangi's being called back into I the saw squad. That. Yeah. Shit. So yeah, look out. There is a few English got some uh, recruits coming into yeah. some reinforcements. So they might come in and do a job. Uh, we will see. Then finally, France versus Italy. As, as you'd imagine, France heavy favourites in France. Italy after an embarrassing performance last week. Can we see this being close at all? Oh, uh, maybe. Like the way that France is playing at the moment, like they're not really offering too much other than. You know, one out things, so I don't know. Yeah. I think the French get going this game. Yeah. I think this is the game they sort of needed to or will need to get their continuity and get their sort of structures and everything back into place and sort of I guess you sort of sometimes when you have a what's meant to be a slightly easier game you can sort of fade back, but it can also sort of knock you back into sort of your standards and how you're meant to play and where you're meant to be. So I think I can see that being this type of game for for France and um, as we said, life without the point. That I think this is where they learn. Okay, this is how we got to play. I think uh, Jellybert uh, steps up and sort of takes control and puts them in the right direction, and they start moving forward. Yeah, France do good for me in France. I just yeah, yeah. hard to go past them. Um, so yeah, boy, that's a lot of heavy footy stuff. Obviously, covering around the world. Obviously, next week we'll start talking about Super Rugby. Super Rugby is round ones next. Next Week? Friday night, mm-hmm. Chiefs Staters to kick it off. Yeah, how bloody good. So we'll yeah, that'll be a gun game. Have full coverage of that. Uh, so the thing on a lighter note, new segment this week, uh, Reed's controversial take. I don't have anything. What's making Ryan Stowers mad, angry, mate? Man. <sighs> You've always got plenty of opinions. What's making you mad, big fella? What's got you going this week? You know, I didn't even know about it, and then uh, Tyler sent it into the chat, but Taylor Swift... Mm. Getting Kanye kicked out of the... Is that real? That's legit. Go what what happened? Give us some context. What happened? Can I don't know. Um, <laughs> so basically, Kanye... Is that controversial enough? <laughs> Kanye uh, bought a ticket right out the front of Taylor Swift's booth. Yeah. And in Kanye fashion, had his mask on and everything, obviously promoting the new album. That keeps getting dropped and undropped. And yeah. Managed to make number one on Apple Music without being released. And okay. Apple Music had to keep deleting it. Right. But he... um. He there, and then apparently she's made a few calls. Now the queen of the NFL, and apparently got him kicked out. He made that bitch famous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was winning an award for a video <laughs> clip. But. Hey, hey, hey. You know, Taylor Swift was good, but Beyonce had one of the greatest <laughs> videos of all time. <laughs> Bro, I watched that video, like, just the other day, and the confidence that he must have, eh, just to walk straight up on a stage and, like, fully take the mic, he's like, and she's like, oh, here you go. And then he goes, basically, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, how, how awkward on all levels. <laughs> it's like, the was it the following year? And there's like, um, people have been asking me what I'd do if I didn't win. Yeah. I guess, guess you never know. know. <laughs> he, oh, bro, he, he is. So you're a Kanye guy. I'm, so I'm pro Swifty, so I hate this fucking chat, man, all right? But, I'm Kanye. Oh, I don't hate Taylor Swift. She's got some bangers out there. Yeah, okay. Kanye. But that got your boil going this week. That really. Well, this morning when I told well, him. this morning, yeah, I didn't even know about it until this morning. Bloody hell, mate. Okay. Some dodgy shit. See the um on the, on the notes of the world uh, college football game coming out. Yep, I, I saw that. Trailer, trailer got released today. this morning. Yeah, fine. Might have to go and invest in a PS5 for that. Yeah, hundred percent. That'd be sick. Really got one. Oh, sweet. Ooh. We know COD till midnight yeah, to miss COD the game. COD till midnight. <laughs> oh, wrong day. Sweet. <laughs> um. So each week. Uh, Rian's going to bring to the audience what's making him mad, what's making him mad, um, and let us know. Because he's a very, we're trying to get his personality showing each week. He's a very controversial man. <laughs> his dad wants some controversial takes. It's going to come from his son. Is okay. there a reason I've been banned from this? I don't know. I just think, <laughs> just trying to bring Rian, uh, you know. He's angrier than I am. <laughs> <laughs> on the field. <laughs> um, any final thoughts, boys, before we wrap up? Oh, I was going to say, mm. Scotland are probably the team that will be England if there's someone that will because they their style of play is so unconventional and like I said with that umbrella defence that England typically use the crossfield kicks are open and Finn Russell loves to pull the trigger on the crossfield kick Polly Earthy does <laughs> yeah well, there we go um, final opinion okay guess for me <laughs> I'm actually really enjoying sort of the rugby at the moment it's exciting to watch sort of yep. this post World Cup um, obviously we're seeing it in the Six Nations at the moment, everything's sort of changed and a lot of players have retired and moved on. Um, then we're looking at Super Rugby and we're talking about it, like all the teams are new. Mm. Uh, even when we get to the New Zealand teams next week, there's a whole heap of new players, new coaches, uh, big turnover of sort of staff and stuff like that. And it makes it exciting to watch because you don't know what to expect. It's great. And I, I think this is sort of, 
hopefully where for Aussie they can start engaging a bit more fans going into the 2027 World Cup and 2000, 2025 British and Irish Lions. Yep, next year. Uh, I was going to say too that Wallabies documentary comes out next Thursday night, so we'll be able to do a good reaction to that as well. Have you just finished that um, Six Nations one? Did you keep watching it? No, you turned me off, mate. You boo yeah, it, you, so. You, you made us feel bad. He was a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm up to that episode. I just um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to watch, eh? It's a hard watch. Oh, okay. All right, mate. Um, anyway, so that wraps us up. We'll see you next week. Uh, if you haven't missed it too, if you like to seeing these two boys' as heads, uh, the whole show is on YouTube each week as well, um, along with play-by-play on Apple Podcasts. So like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. All right, sorry, we're back. Emergency situation here. Rian's got something more to say. Rian, what do you got? Oh, boys, have you seen that? Um, the ref, Gardner? And he's running around <laughs> on a rugby field. He's running around <laughs> on a rugby field, and he's calling stuff. And yeah, it's this just is a, that documentary I was telling you about. Is that in the yeah, documentary? Yeah. Oh, he's my doing goodness. his practice game. What do you mean, bro? <laughs> he's like, he'll, he'll like be like, come on, boys, I need you to settle down. And he's like, oh, no. Boys, I'd like if you just settle down a little bit. And oh, he's no. like fully critiquing. Oh, bro. <laughs> that is crap. Okay. Mate, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. He's crap. You didn't like that? <laughs> I just thought, like, imagine if you're, like, running on a track and you're just seeing this guy out and then he's like, yeah, take your knees and like. <laughs> he's like, sell it down, boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sell it down, boy. And then he, like, fully critiques what he says. He's like, no, nah, that didn't sound good enough. <laughs> What's that? That's like, imagine we do that on the field running around. Oh, yep, could have passed that there. Oh, yep. Yeah, and then after, they're like, you know, it was a pretty good session. No back chat. <laughs> <laughs> He's manifesting his calls, mate. Yeah, I know. Like, fully, that's what they he's, he's an Aussie guy too, old Angus. Oh. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> explains a lot. Anyway, I'm gonna no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll clip that. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. All right, guys. See you later. <laughs>